So the thing is, there is this multiplication property of modulo, which I just kind of proved. Um, but like, again, nobody seems to agree on what all these different modulo properties are called. Um, and so that means that basically there's a lot of different versions of the multiplication property of modulo. And one of them is really, really important because it allows us to actually do our, um, to find modulos of really, really, really big numbers. Because I'm doing this because eventually I want to prove RSA encryption and why it works. And in order to prove why it works, I have to use all these modulo theories. And so I really wanted to find names for them, but I couldn't because apparently nobody could agree on what they're called. Um, so different ways to write this um, is basically, okay, well, if instead of having these being A's, if they were B, sorry, instead of this being a B, if this was an A, and the theory is I could just keep putting in more and more and more of them, just like mod B, mod B, mod B, except mod A, mod A, mod A. If I did that, then I would basically have A to the X is congruent to A mod N all to the X and then mod N that modulo N. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense that I could just keep multiplying by B except now make it B, I could just make A, and then I'd end up with exactly that. Okay, so we can show that. Um, we can also kind of um, rewrite it instead of just calling it X, we can say, well, let's say it's A to the X, Y, um, that we can kind of regroup how we are, um, how we're doing this. So basically we could just do this whole thing to the Y, reapply this, and get a to the x, y is a to the x, whoa, that was weird, um, a to the x mod n to the y mod n. So these are just all different versions of the same thing, just like special cases, um, I guess is where I'm going. So these are all different ways that we can apply it. There's another way to apply it that I especially like, actually, which is kind of a combination of these two which is to say that a to the x is congruent to a to the y mod n, and then you're gonna multiply that times a x minus y, and then mod n that whole thing. So it's basically an idea of, um, instead of mod n-ing the b, like if I don't feel like mod n-ing the b term, I don't have to, because eventually I'm gonna mod n it again. All right, so, um, this ends up being really, really awesome. Um, the proof is really similar. I can just show you that right quick. No, it's a exact same thing. You don't need to see that. But let me tell you why we care. The reason we care, this is our like BFF mod, mod formula thingy. Because, so what happens is, um, it was funny because I was trying to do this in um, MATLAB. I was trying to do something in MATLAB and I put in a modulo and it came out like totally wrong. And I'm like, what's going on? And basically that's what happened is what I was telling you about is that this a to the x was so big that um, it uh, it erred out. Well, it didn't err out. It just went so high that it lost the fidelity of that remainder. So um, basically the idea would be, okay, so kind of erase my hearts, although it makes me sad to do so. So let's say you wanted to get, and I know this isn't a really big number, but let's say you wanted to get 7 to the 6, 7 to the 6, um, mod 5. Okay, so what you would do is first of all, you would just mod 5 the 7. So this is kind of like a process. So first of all, you're going to go 7 mod 5 because you're going to simplify the base. So you get 2 to the 6th. But now you need to mod in that again. Okay, so the idea is here you can simplify the base um, by just like, yeah, you know, like this could be how shall I say this? There we go. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Here we're just simplifying the base. So we can just simplify the base um, to get 2 to the 6th. Okay. Now the next thing that we can do is um, it shows us here that we can break these out when it, um, however we want. Now from a computing standpoint, it's probably easier to just, instead of worrying about like, should I bring out 2, should I bring out 3 or whatever, we're just going to bring out 1 at a time. So I have 2 to the 6 mod 5. So I can say, well, that's the same thing as 2 mod 5 times 2 to the 5th mod 5. I'm going to run out of space. Um, and all that mod 5. 
mod 5, right? It's because I have 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 5th is 2 to the 6th. And I go, okay, well, that wasn't really exciting. Um, so then that means that's the same thing. That's 2 times 2 to the 5th mod 5. Okay, this looks really complicated. I'm going to put it in a for loop in a second, and it's going to get prettier. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times 2 to the 5th mod 5. Well, now we do it again. So we have 2 times, and then we'll have 2 to the 1 mod 5 times 2 to the 4th mod 5 <laughs> mod 5. Okay, this is exciting, isn't it? Um, and so again, this becomes 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So now we've got 4 times 2 to the 4th mod 5. And this whole thing is mod 5. Modded 5. All right, break it apart again. Four. It's going to get exciting eventually, I swear. Two, it's really not, actually. <laughs> 2 mod 5. 2 cubed mod 5. And I know you're like, but I can just do this. And I know that. We could have done it from the beginning. But we're trying to teach a computer how to do this without having to think. All right. Again, this becomes 2. And so we have 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 8. Um, now, since this number is bigger than 5, um, we can kind of go back and it's just instead of saying this times 2 to the 3 mod 5, um, what we can do is we can put an extra mod 5 here. I'll do it in a different color. So, um, And this can be being done automatically. Um, we just hadn't really mentioned it before. Like technically, 4 mod 5 is just 4. Um, 2 mod 5 is just 2. So we're just going to keep kind of doing this. Um, mod 5. All right, so 8 mod 5 is 3. 3. I feel like something's weird there. 3, and then we're going to break apart the 2 cubes. So times 2 to the 1st times 2 squared. Isn't this fun? Like, this is not what I wanted to do with my free time. Well, obviously it is because this is what you're doing. Um, so 3 times 2 gives me 2. Well, three times, yeah, 3 times 2 is 2. And then I've got 2... Uh, no, 3 times 2 is 6. Let's try that again. 6 times 2 squared mod 5. Da -da 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 and then I can do a secret mod 5, but a not-so-secret mod 5 here. Mod 5. So I've got 1 times 2 to the 1st mod 5 times 2 to the 1st mod 5. I know this seems really dumb, but I promise that this is the way that you do this with with um, computers. So um, 2 times 2 mod 5 is just going to be 2 again. This is super fun. So I've got 2 times 2 to the first mod 5. Mod 5. So I've got 2 times 2 mod 5, which is 4. Mod 5 which is one. Yay! Okay, let's make sure that was actually the right answer. All right, so we have seven to the sixth. Come here, girl. We have seven to the sixth power, and we want to divide that by five. Well, I can just look at this because I'm a, capable of rational thought. Um, multiples of, of, a th of, of five. How shall I say this? I'm going to go ahead and divide by five, and it's going to be... Thank you. That's what I wanted to do. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5, and it's going to give me 0. 0.8, and because I know that 0. 0.8 is 4 fifths, that means it's a, um, a remainder of 4 fifths. So I'm getting <laughs> the right answer. 4. I'm getting the right answer. Um, but, but this is a really kind of a cool way to do this. So let me just kind of show you um, the pseudocode for this. That's actually all that it is. So um, if I have something that's written in the form, you know, x is the base to the exponent mod n, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate my base like I did here. Instead of having a base 7, I can just do this as a base 2. Now I have to start at 1 because it's a for loop and I can't multiply stuff by just a nothing. So I'm going to initialize it as a um, 1. And then you're going to see for the 6 times that I would have had here, it doesn't look like 6 steps because I kind of um, expanded unnecessarily and computers are more efficient at explain no they're not more efficient explaining things but anyway um i would do this say six times um i would multiply by the base take the mod multiply by the base take the mod and that's kind of what i was doing here the only thing is that i was physically showing you what was left like this was left this was left this was left um i don't have to necessarily tell my computer that that's what's um left because that's what i'm doing here in the for loop is i'm just pulling that out um 
multiple times. Now, if you're saying, how come it, you've only got five of those? I guess this is the sixth one is whenever I pulled it out the, uh, the sixth time. Or I guess technically it was right here. However you want to look at one of those two, you could count as like the sixth time. But that's kind of what we do whenever we're trying to find the base, uh, find the modulos of these things with big giant bases on them. So that's, um, that's kind of neat. So this is just me doing this in MATLAB. Um, so that's the exact same um, modulo. Uh, this, this is just converting that pseudocode into um, MATLAB. It's just that I'm using the, the function mod instead of the percent sign. I think C uses the percent sign, um, but MATLAB just uses the modulo. But this is what that would look like, and you can kind of see that um, you can get the exact same answer. And if you want to try much, much larger um, um, problems, you can totally do that. Um, and it's, I just think this is super cool.